Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is satellite-based command and control channels. One of our partners, Kaspersky, released some research talking about a new technique that very sophisticated threat actors are using to control their malware. The group they're talking about is Turla. This is an advanced persistent threat actor group that's been launching very targeted attacks for over eight years. So not your typical cyber criminal. Kaspersky found some of their malware used Using a new command and control channel technique. Now, of course, the command and control channel is the communication mechanism the bad guy uses to control his remote Trojan or his botnet. Typically, nowadays, bad guys use HTTPS, encrypted web traffic, but they have to hide their command and control server. If they use a hard coded IP address for their command and control server, it makes it very easy for authorities to find it and take it down. So, lately, bad guys have used a lot of techniques to try to obfuscate where their command and control server is. They do things like go through multiple proxies. They've used peer-to-peer -peer networking to try to hide their command and control server. But ultimately, if law enforcement is persistent enough, they can eventually track down a command and control server through a number of proxies. In any case, these Turla threat actors have found a new way to help obfuscate or hide their command and control channel. There's a number of places in the world that use satellite internet. Basically, these hard to get to places that don't have hard lines sometimes get their internet downloads via a satellite. Now, they may use another mechanism like dial up to actually upload data. But one-way traffic for that connection is actually satellite communication. And as it turns out, there's all kinds of ways that attackers can actually sniff that wireless satellite communication. The Turla threat actors figured out that if they could find somebody that's using satellite near them, they could actually use that IP address, sniff on it, and make their command and control channel uh, report back to that satellite user. Now, all the traffic going to that user would be kind of junk traffic as far as that user is concerned. So his computer would drop the traffic. But meanwhile, the attacker would also receive the satellite communication and then would have a very subtle way to talk to or control his malware. And this is very nefarious because it makes it very hard for law authorities to actually pinpoint the command and control server. Because satellite can serve a, a radius of over a thousand miles, how do you really know where the attacker is? He's kind of piggy backing on a victim satellite traffic. In any case, if you're interested, be sure to check out the SecureList blog post about it. It's very, very interesting. Now, I don't suspect criminal malware authors will use this technique. It's just kind of an interesting story. As far as what you should do about this, there's really nothing you should do other than continue to make sure that you don't get malware in your network. If you use a unified threat management appliance or a next generation firewall that has IPS, antivirus, advanced threat protection, and and other security controls, it's probably already doing a good job of keeping the malware out of your network. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.